Have you ever thought about investing in property, but been worried about the hassle and stress that comes with it? If so, this story might bring you some comfort. When I started investing in property, my life was a mess. I was taking phone calls, replying to emails, and dealing with tenants 24-7. And I was never free of that nagging feeling that something serious was about to go wrong. Eventually, things got so bad, I only had two choices. Either give up on property investing or try to solve the problem once and for all. Luckily for my finances, I chose the second of those options. And after some trial and error, I developed a system that allows me to manage a multi-million pound portfolio in just one hour per month. So in this video, I'm gonna take you through the three key changes that save me the most time, some advice on how to make those changes for yourself, and I'll also share some simple time-saving hacks that make everything run smoother, no matter how many properties you have. So I bought my first property more than 15 years ago while I was still working full time. This meant I had to squeeze viewings in during my lunch break and on the weekend. So it took a lot longer than I would have liked to find my first investment and the second and the third. This was okay at first, but as I started to take investing more seriously, I realized I was missing out on loads of potential income. And even worse, I wasn't able to hold out for the very best deals because I just didn't have the time to view that many. And then things got even worse because prices near where I lived in London had gone up and I started to see more potential in places hundreds of miles away like Liverpool and Nottingham. Squeezing a viewing into a lunch break suddenly turned into booking a day off work and spending hours in the car. This is an extremely common situation for people who have a high pressure, high earning job that generates the funds to invest in property in the first place. In the end, unless they want their growth to stall, they have to do one of two things. And I actually did both. Both. Firstly, I hired other people to view properties for me. I'd get to know people in the area, like builders and letting agents, in exchange for getting the refurb or management work when I found something to buy. They'd take photos and report back, saving me hours and hours of time. There are also dedicated services that will send someone to view on your behalf. One of the best known is called Viewer, which I haven't used myself, so it isn't a recommendation. Or you can just find someone local who's looking for a flexible part-time job. Arm them with a checklist, ask them to take some videos, and away you go. Usually, I'd still go go and view it myself but only once I'd had an offer accepted. So instead of viewing 10 properties, which might turn out to be rubbish, I'd only need to see one that I was pretty certain about. This is, of course, a scary leap, and it's not for everyone, but I was determined to keep growing, and it's the only way I could do it. Even so, I was still spending hours and hours on other parts of the process, choosing where to buy, trawling through Rightmove, calling agents to book in viewings, and then negotiating the deal. So in the end, I took things a step further, and I ended up buying all my properties through our company, Property Hub Invest. Our team looks at hundreds of deals, they reject 97% of what they see, and negotiate hard to secure strong discounts on the rest. I still need to double check their research and validate that any specific deal is right for me, but it takes a fraction of the time it used to. And we actually have a free toolkit that can help you to do this when you work with someone, whether it's us or anyone else. It includes things like a property spreadsheet so you can run the numbers on the deal, and a step-by-step -step process to assess certain investment areas. There's a link in the description. So once I made this change, I was able to grow my portfolio way faster because my own time wasn't a constraint. But this sowed the seeds of a new problem. More properties means more paperwork, more calls from tenants, more repairs to arrange quotes for, you name it. Even using letting agents, there was still a mountain of work to get through. And at the same time, my business was growing. So I was constantly trying to juggle the two. I'd either be ignoring my business and stifling growth, or ignoring my property portfolio and losing money or letting tenants down. I felt permanently on the verge of losing control and missing something important. And I seriously considered selling some perfectly good properties just to reduce the workload. But instead, I decided to start treating my property portfolio portfolio like my business and outsource the day-to-day -day management. You might think that with an agent managing the properties, there wouldn't be much to do. But in reality, there's always something. A quote to question, a checkout report to go over, or a repair to chase up. And on top of that, there were things like arranging mortgages, chasing up solicitors, doing the bookkeeping, and countless other tasks that a letting agent just couldn't help with. So I took the game-changing step of hiring a dedicated PA. I didn't want to do things by half, so I hired someone with loads of property experience who could do everything better than I could anyway, and could even take over the management of the properties that were near her, cutting out agents and saving me money. She now works for me for 10 hours per week, which means hours of extra time that I can dedicate to work or family, and gives me the reassurance that everything's under control and being done properly. And now, I only spend my time on three things. Signing documents, sending large sums of money, and replying to my PA. Of course, this comes at a price, but you don't have to go the whole hog and hire a specialist. Using sites like Upwork or Fiverr, 
you can find someone anywhere in the world who's got strong admin skills and they can learn the property specific aspect over time. The main thing is making the mindset shift that it doesn't have to be you doing everything. But it does also help to have some time-saving hacks for working with a team, which I'll get to in just a minute. But beyond the day-to-day -day mechanics of running a portfolio, I made a more fundamental change that probably made the biggest difference. When I first got into property, I had a serious case of shiny object syndrome. I got involved in every type of project unmanageable, by to lets, refurbs, HMOs, flips, small developments, everything. But as Property Hub grew, I started to rethink things. Even though I dialed in my processes and my team, I realized that some projects were taking way more time than others. Tenant turnover was higher, there were whole teams of builders to spend time communicating with, and there was way more paperwork. So while I've been attracted to property, by the promise of passive income, the reality was far from it. I'd actually created a whole separate mini business. And when I looked at where I was making most of my money, it was the properties that I'd bought years ago and had just been sitting there quietly, gradually increasing in value. So I decided it was time to focus. I banned myself from doing anything fancy. I sold my HMOs and I even sold the single lets that were the most problematic. And for future purchases, I started looking beyond return on investment and started thinking about return on effort. I started buying higher quality properties that attracted more reliable tenants, even if the month-to-month -month numbers were a little bit lower. The wonderful thing about long-term buy and hold, especially with the right properties, is that most of the time, nothing's happening. But of course, nothing is ever truly passive. And hiring a team doesn't solve all your problems. You still need to optimize things so the team can run as much as possible without you. So here are my top time-saving hacks that I would recommend you start using right now. When I first hired my PA, I still felt like I had the job of paying for something every day. Even something simple like paying a council tax bill can take 20 minutes by the time you've dealt with their annoying website or figured out how to make a bank transfer. This might not seem a lot, but this time adds up. Then my PA would have to follow up to make sure I'd paid it and I'd have to send them the confirmation. It was just a headache. So what did I do? I set up a second bank account so she could handle the day-to-day -day payments for me. I keep a low balance in there at all times, so even if she went rogue, it wouldn't be the end of the world. And you wouldn't believe how much time this saved me. Now I don't have to worry about any payments other than large transfers to solicitors when I'm making a purchase. The next stumbling block we encountered was communications. Everything was coming through to my email, so I'd have to forward it or CC her. Then my PA might miss something or I wasn't CC'd on an important thread to her. It was a mess. So the next solution was to set up a shared inbox. That way we both had visibility over everything that was happening and saved us a lot of back and forth. I also bit the bullet and spoke to all my agents, insurance providers, local authorities, and all those kind of people, giving them the authority to speak to her rather than me. As a result of that one-off job, she can now handle most issues without me even knowing about them. But as much as we're moving into a fully digital world, there's still some paperwork to deal with, which was coming to my house. Now, I wasn't about to set up a shared address for us, so I came up with a digital filing system that made things easier. Now, as soon as I receive a letter, I use an app on my phone that scans it and uploads it to a shared Google Drive. It can go from my doormat to my shredder in less than a minute without anything being lost. And it means we always know where things are and keeps us organized. But as you know, most property investors spend a large part of their time assessing deals. And in the beginning, I lost out on some incredible opportunities because I didn't act fast enough. So check out this video next, where I take you through my step-by-step -step process for analyzing property deals in two minutes, because not only will it save you time, it'll also make you more money.